So now I hand over to you, Bishop Gerald Walsh. I would also like to thank Mayor McCohen and his committee for beginning this wonderful rally so many years ago and seeing it grow so well in the past two years. It's a very, very great thing to do. But to sign of what's out there, it's a sign of if you invite people to live by their base instincts, their basic instincts, they will respond. So, Mayor, thank you very much for what you've done. I know that Archbishop Golden looked forward to being with you. He told us at a meeting two weeks ago he was coming here, but events prevented that. And one of the reasons he was going to come was to thank you for your ongoing support for the pro-life effort at all stages of life, even when it was not as popular as it is today. I'm sure many of you remember 20, 30 years ago when all of these things began happening, how difficult it was to find people in public life or even in private life to support people who were speaking out against abortion, infanticide, partial birth abortion, euthanasia, assisted suicide, and all the other litanies of horror. So, in his name, I thank you for all that you have done, but more importantly, for all that you are. You could be anywhere today. May I mention you could be at the Jet Game or watching on television. You could be doing all sorts of things, but the fact that you're here says a lot about you. You have your priorities in proper order. It is said, of course, that the time we are living in, there are no heroes. No, that isn't true. Look around you. Men and women who take the time to serve and help people in need. Men and women who are looking at the needs of others rather than their own. Men and women who encourage young people to live up to their God-given potential, to focus on the positive opportunities they have to make a difference in today's world. Men and women who begin where they are, who look around quietly to see the needs of others and to help them meet those needs. Men and women who come from every class, every race, every group, every religious faith and sometimes no faith at all, whose sole purpose is to contribute to the helping and to enjoying the gift of life in a very challenging period of history. And how could we not mention the young people today so many young people in this city, in parish youth groups, and other groups, who resist the peer pressure. The peer pressure today to engage in what is called the culture of death, which means drugs, addictions, gangs, and all the other things that are harmful not only to them, but to the society in which they live. So there are very real heroes today, very much about doing good, very much about being role models for their own age group, and they look up to you to continue helping them by your own efforts. Pope John Paul II, in one of, one of his many trips to the United States, told us, to a great extent, the story of America has been a story of long and difficult struggles to overcome the prejudices which excluded certain categories of people from a full share in the country's life. First, the struggle against religious intolerance, then the struggle against racial discrimination and in favor of civil rights for everyone. Sadly, in our time, a new class of people is being excluded. When the unborn child, the stranger in the womb, is declared to be beyond the protection of society, not only are America's deepest traditions radically undermined and endangered, but a moral blight is brought upon society. I am also thinking, he says, of threats to the elderly, the severely handicapped, and all those who do not seem to have any social usefulness. When innocent human beings are declared inconvenient or burdensome, and thus unworthy of legal and social protection, 
grievous damage is done to the moral foundations of the democratic community. The right to life is the first of all rights. It is the foundation of democratic liberties and the keystone of the edifice of civil society. Both as Americans and as believers, Americans must be committed to the defense of life in all of its stages and in every condition. And so we will stand up every time that human life is threatened. When the sacredness of life before birth is attacked, we will stand up and proclaim that no one ever has the authority to destroy unborn life. When a child is described as a burden, or is looked upon only as a means to satisfy an emotional need, we will stand up and insist that every child is a unique and unrepeatable gift of God with the right to a loving and united family. When the value of the family is threatened because of social and economic pressures, we will stand up and reaffirm that the family is necessary not only for the private good of every person, but also for the common good of every society, nation, and state. When freedom is used to dominate the weak, to squander natural resources and energy, and to deny basic necessities to people, we will stand up and reaffirm the demands of justice and social law. When the sick, the aged, or the dying are abandoned in loneliness, we will stand up and proclaim that they are worthy of love, care, and respect. All these things many of you have been doing, may you continue to do them in the future, and we ask the Lord to bless each and every one of you this afternoon, and as we go down that road, keep in mind the promise the Lord made to all of us, I am with you all days until the end of time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you meet with him every, every other Monday, so tomorrow I will be happy to present this to him in your name. And we thank you very, very much once again for all that you are. And all that you are.